the Joe Rogan experience. Do you think that there is there a style of film or a kind of movie that you want to do that you haven't done yet that you're thinking you'd like to get into? I mean, there's two different projects I tried to develop for a long time and they both failed to get off the ground. One was this movie called The Broad Street Bullies. And it was about the 1974 Philadelphia Flyers. And the movie is, the, the true story is so insane that you can't believe it's real. Just the way that they decided, you know, they're a fledgling team, nobody cared. So they basically built a team of tough guys, you know, which is kind of like slap shots, almost like the same. Mm -hmm. Won the Stanley Cup twice based on just being so scared so, and so terrorizing other teams would be scared to play them. And they'd be like, oh, you get the Philly flu because major players would be like, oh, I'm too sick to play when we get to Philly. Cause the, and you go back and you watch the fights that took place during the, the, those seasons. They literally go into the crowd and they're fighting with fans. They come off the ice. They break up. I mean, when the guys are fighting, it's not, and it doesn't seem like good natured, like, oh, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go. It seems like gripping someone's hair and punching them in the face till their teeth are all gone type fighting. Cops are breaking up the fights on the ice. Cops. Cops. <laughs> with skates? <laughs> no. Pol uniformed policemen come onto the ice and start breaking things right, up. Right, but they're sliding around with their... Yeah, trying to... Their regular it's all shoes. on YouTube. It's amazing. I mean, I, just, I, I researched this for, for years. And, um, and then they just, you know, and, and Bobby Clark at that time was like the most hated man in hockey. I don't know if you're a hockey fan at all, but he was just like... Another one of those guys who he had... I don't know. I could go on forever for a movie that didn't make, but, but I, I kept trying to make it go and go and it just could it just never... You could just never, and I was in, went to Philadelphia and I was hanging out with the team and I was in their archives and having access to everything. I was like, this is going to happen and just couldn't, it wouldn't move. Why, why not? I don't know. I don't know if the team and the team owners want to glorify that time in the, in, if there's an amazing documentary on it that was on HBO, maybe like five years ago you got to watch it it's what's do you remember nuts. the name it might have been called broad street bullies because it was you know the spectrum was on broad street mm -hmm. so that's how they get the name but it's nuts and it was like you know the dave schultz and he's wearing like a nazi helmet and he was the tough guy on the team that everybody was petrified of and these guys are like had really long hair and big beards i mean it's not like hockey you know everybody looked like a <laughs> maniac <laughs> and they'd get stuff like you know you'd see him get stitches Get hit, get stitched, go back on the ice with the stitches. Their jerseys covered in blood, and they don't even change their jersey. They're playing covered in blood. Well, it's such a crazy something sport. they never do now. Well, the sport still to this day is such a throwback because it's the only sport where you're allowed to fight in the middle of the sport. Like, hockey, imagine if they had that with basketball. Hockey players are the toughest motherfuckers because I always loved hockey. I wanted to be a hockey player when I was a little kid, and that was my thing. And for a long time, me and my wife, we had season tickets for the Kings. So we'd go to every single game, year after year after year. And we'd always hang out with the team. And they'd come to our house and then party. And we'd always be with them in Vegas. And, and they're like football players on skates. And they're all for like these like guys from like Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And like they yeah. take their teeth out and they get crazy in the bar. And <laughs> they're like mental. And they're just like, who else is skating at 90 miles an hour crashing into boards yeah. that are just have no give? But it's so interesting that it's the one sport where it's written in that you can fight. <laughs> they fight. I mean, it's, it's so funny. It's so crazy. Like that would make so many sports so much more interesting, but nobody would ever do it. Yeah. It's, it's literally the tough guy sport. It is the tough guy sport. And the thing that always drove me crazy, like drove me crazy, like it involves me, but they would always advertise the LA Kings as like, it's like this family thing. Like, oh, come on down and cheer for the Kings. And it'd be like a, girl in a hockey jersey on the billboards around town. I'm like, you should just put up mug shot style portraits of the players <laughs> like smiling with their teeth missing and it just says, you think you're fucking tough? Right. Kings. Because they're, yeah. and then it's not like the old days where they're kind of like skillful. They're like, this guy's like six foot five and you put them on skates and they're huge and they, you know, they, they're all jacked up and big like football players except they're on skates. They're, I, I think it would be dudes. a hard sell for a lot of people. But, <laughs> but what's not a hard sell is MMA, which is weird, right? Because yeah. that's like the darling of so I mean, you go to the fights and Matt Damon will be there and Leonardo DiCaprio and everybody wants to be seen there and Kanye's in the crowd. And it's one of those things where people have decided like that's okay. Meanwhile, they're yeah. smashing their faces open with <laughs> elbows on the ground. Mental, man. Heads trapped against <laughs> the cage and they're pummeling each other and it's okay. 
And you watch it, they, they break it up like, I'm pretty sure that guy's already got brain damage. You needed yeah. to stop that punching yeah. a few seconds earlier. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's okay, It's a crazy though, sport. Because it's become accepted. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. It's weird. Like, a fight in a basketball game is a giant deal. <laughs> like, oh, my God. A guy a fight shoves another out. guy, and it's like a this big deal. This is crazy, yeah. If a guy, you know, like, judo tossed a guy and landed <laughs> on his head. Somebody did that recently in a hockey game. It was awful. Like, Robin Black did a breakdown of it where some guy got a guy in a clinch and hit him with a hip toss and slammed his head on, onto the concrete. It was horrible. It's weird. I mean, I can see why they... They want. I think they probably like hockey being more family friendly because the arenas are so nice. You bring the kids, yeah. and they don't want a bunch of maniacs beating the shit out of each other. But they can still fight. They can still fight, but it, is, it is. Watch this. This is crazy. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's bad. That's horrible. That's an asshole move because, like, that's not even fighting. Like, and plus, Ugh, the, that guy landed rough. with both of their weights. Guys on his head. He's out cold. I mean, that's like serious, serious fucking brain. Yeah, damage. I remember one time, one particular incident of the king's game where the guy was out and it went on forever and the vibe was so heavy in the arena because we're like is he dead because mm. you know you know when someone hits and they just yeah. stop moving yeah, in that way stiffen and up. Like, freaks you out you pull up some broad street bullies fighting from 1974 yeah, pull up some of that yeah i've seen or so dave many. schultz oh that's this thing yeah this is the documentary it's amazing oh look at the way they look back then yeah everything it's, it's like back in the day it's just such a weird thing to see people from that era <laughs> oh here they uh, are yeah they don't this is like early days before they became insane oh so it built up because what happened was when they were starting as a team they got really manhandled one time by a certain team and they were like this is never going to happen again and they rebuilt the team with basically like thug type guys i'm always amazed that anybody could punch while they're on skates I and mean, that's i can't even skate <laughs> How the fuck do you maintain your? I don't know. These position? guys are amazing athletes. I one time I went I went down and got to skate at practice with the L.A. Kings with the guys who were injured, and man, that rink seems small when those big guys all get on the ice. I'm it sure. seems like wow, there's no room up here. But it's also they collide into each other against the wall, which the amount of shock on your body. I know, it's amazing that. I mean, they just go and go and well, go. That's maybe Dave we can reignite some interest with this conversation because I think that would be it. Look at he's pulling his fucking hair. Yeah. Holy it shit. It wasn't like, it was. I'm going to watch that. It's amazing. So have you tried again recently? Or no, do, I, do I you tried, really think that it's just like they just don't want to be connected to this story? Well, there's this guy, Ed Snyder, who was the guy who started the whole team. And that's where, and I met with, I thought he was the reason it wasn't going to happen. And then he passed away because, I mean, he was pretty old. And then we started talking to the newer people. And it just, I don't know, you're like, how many years of my life am I going to dictate, you know, right, put right, into this? Right. And you don't know. And someone said to me one time, well, you got further than anyone else ever did. I'm like, how many times have they tried to make this movie? Why didn't you warn me about that five years ago? <laughs> Is there any other kind of movie that you're, you're interested in other than something like that? Well, yeah, there was this other one that I worked on for a long time that never went either. I had bought the rights to this book called Raised Eyebrows which was a light that about the last few years of Groucho Marx's life. Ah. This guy, Steve Stolia, wrote it. And he was a 19-year-old college kid who started this petition drive. Do you like the Marx Brothers? Love them. Yeah. Because Animal Crackers had been lost. That was the lost film. And at UC, I think it was at UCLA. Sorry, Steve, I can't remember your college. Um, he started this petition drive to get... Animal Crackers released from the vault and released because it hadn't been seen since like the 40s or something. And he did. This was, in the, this was in the early 70s. And through that, he became Groucho's assistant. But Groucho's final years are really dark because he kept having strokes and he was ill. And he had this woman, Erin Fleming, who was supposed to be his – they kind of played it like it was his girlfriend, but she was sort of the caretaker – and it was turns into Sunset Boulevard inside his house. you know. And Steve eventually is put in charge of Groucho. Because the, it's a really dark Turns story. Turns into Sunset Boulevard, how so? Because he, Groucho was being abused and drugged by this woman. She oh, isolated wow. from his family, and it's like happening in this Beverly Hills home. And it's just dark. It was dark towards the end for Groucho. Really? And but the book was fascinating because the guy who wrote it, Steve, who's you know still alive, and we're friends. I was just like, it was one of those books you read in like five seconds, and I just happened to find it by accident. I was like, this is an amazing movie, but again, years and years go on trying to get it made, and just can't get it going.
Groucho was such a controversial character. He had one of the greatest lines ever on You Bet Your Life. He, he's talking to this guy, and he's asked the guy, like, uh, you married? Yes. How many kids you got? <laughs> the cigar line. Yeah. yeah. He, he, the guy says he got a gang of kids, and he goes, geez. He goes, he goes, oh, I love my wife. He goes, I love my cigar, too, but I take it out of my mouth every now and then. Yeah. That is That was a hugely controversial line. Yeah, he was amazing, and he was like, and yeah, he was very out. eyebrows. Yeah, there it is. He was very outspoken. Wow. He was like on Nixon's shit list and stuff, and he didn't My give a crap. My years inside Groucho's house. Yeah, wow. it's really fast. If you get that book, you'll read it in like two seconds. That's. It's always sad when some iconic old figure like is being taken care of as he's older, and you know he's getting fucked over, and someone's waiting for him to die so they can get the money. Yeah, and she kept kind of doing thing like, "We're gonna make you." come back Groucho and we're going to do a TV special. It's going to be, you know, like you and Frank Sinatra. And Groucho's like, you know, had on his like third stroke and was like, can't really talk or, he's, you know, Ugh. and it's just like, and a couple of the final appearances of him are pretty rough because he was pretty sharp and good. Even when he was older, we've watched him on Dick Cavett or something, but then it got bad. And then how did this lady get into his life? <sighs> how did that go down? I'm trying to remember. She was, uh, it's been, I think she was a secretary at first and just kind of weaseled her way in. Ugh. I can't remember exactly. I should I should be able to remember. I read the book so many times. But. There's so many stories like that of like, oh, I think there was a Stan Lee story like that in his last few days. That like, happens a lot. Yeah, you know, people were trying to get I, his money. I remember uh, remember that one, Martha Ray. Yes. That was like yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. towards the end with her. Like it was like, oh, and her boyfriend. And she's like this in a wheelchair. Oh, was like this that's right. Yeah, yeah, weird yeah. Weird shit. And I was like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that is sad shit, and their yeah. kids are done with them, and so someone else is taking care of them. Well, they're so old, their kids have all died of old age, <laughs> you know, and this was like, you know. So you wanted to do that film? Yeah. What happened with that? It just be, it just couldn't get it going. We thought we'd, every time it seemed like we were on the move, it just would stall, and then I had a falling out with the producers, and I was like, oh, you know, five years spent with this, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The drain of time. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Like for every movie I've ever gotten made, there's probably five others that I tried to get made that couldn't get made. So it's a real time suck. Yeah. That's, that's a fucking huge drag, man. 